packing up, heading to the new lake we bought. This is going to be so awesome. I'm going to bring a minimal amount of stuff for this time out. A little bit of ice fishing stuff. It's all kinds of wooded. It's beautiful. All kinds of new adventures to be had there. I'll throw a new blade on here and head down to the lake and show you how. Oh, The best part is, is it's just up the road from where we live. We did think about buying a uh, a place like way up on Moosehead Lake or something like that. But the whole point is, is we get to have adventures, we can film them, do cool things for YouTube, and it's a family thing. So if we wanna take the kids over on a warm day after school, it's not more than a seven mile drive to take them over and throw them off the dock and drown them if they're being mouthy. Being close to home, I've caught fish here before in the St. George where they uh, stock it every year. And I even did a catch and cook up a tree years ago right on this very property and caught a bass from the shore and then paddled back to the boat launch area. Barely a second or two a story later and we are here. It's five acres of lakefront property. It's actually 1,000 feet of lakefront edge. I'm Zachary Fowler, and you're watching Fowler's Makery of Mischief. Yeah. That gives us quite a bit of lake frontage for adventures. Part of the reason is, what you can see here is this little field. There's a property marker right there. And this field area is supposedly the only area that doesn't um, have so much slope that you're not allowed to build on. So we're only allowed to build like uh, a house with like 1,000... 500 square feet or something like that like a small lake house and so a lot of people didn't want to buy it a most is coming and we're gonna do a five-day winter survival challenge next week it's gonna be super cold it's I'm so excited this is like my culmination of my dream if you've been watching for a while you'll remember that I've said that so many times that like haven't I in so many of my videos like I want lakefront property let's grab our sled out of here We need like a back rope on the back of it. There's quite a bit of slope here. One of the things I want to do is uh, a nice luge run. What do you think of that? Yeah. Wouldn't that be fun? We have so much in common with funny ideas to do things that, you know, like I could introduce any idea and should probably never say no to it. Whoever owned the property before cut down some of these bigger trees and they left us a whole bunch of firewood. He had built this little rig here and he had like a uh, Alaskan chainsaw mill. And before we bought this, I randomly was like, I need one of those. I've always wanted one. I'm gonna buy it. I'll find something to do with it. I wanna make some more garden beds, raised garden beds. And his little ladder is still here for that. And we could roll up our logs and mill up some pieces to make rustic furniture and all kinds of stuff here. I get to do it. <laughs> you saw that look in my eye. You're like, what? I'm glad you have help here. That's perfect. <laughs> the property, as you can see, is not too deep. Maybe 280 feet from the water's edge down here all the way up to there. So you can hear the cars. When I used to live up in the woods, you know, at my property there before going on alone, it's like, it was so quiet. When there was snow on the trees, you couldn't hear a car ever. Like you wonder if the whole world had just disappeared. After moving to Union and buying the house there with my show winnings, I, that first day I was at that house, I went out in the backyard and I kind of cried because like it, it was so loud. There were so many cars and I can hear the little highway in the back. I got all like weepy, you know, and, uh, and now I don't even hear it at all. One of my favorite features already is we got a little stream. It comes down from up there underneath the culvert. A little bit of a thing going on here. Quite a bit of water moving through it right now for a little stream, but not enough to make me think that it'll be here all summer. I bet you it dries right out. But the rest of the time, three quarters of the year, I can build my new water wheel rotisserie thing in it. 
maybe even you know run some uh, water off of the hill up higher and put a little water mill and a charging station and a little bit of a power bank some sort of something cool here because when I talk to them this is not an actual stream or river this is runoff and so it doesn't it's not regulated so we built that yesterday and the kids cook marshmallows and I think we'll uh, get the fire going and make some make some snacks and I'm gonna set my ice traps out um, you gonna you look like you're already taking off She's good. Were you going for a nature walk? I'm gonna go for a walk. All right. See if you right. uh, find us any treasures on the new piece of land. Okay, I'll try to. All right. Love you. Love you. So I mentioned earlier that there's an issue with the lakefront property that made people not want to buy it because you were limited to building up there because of the slope of the land. You're not allowed to build because of the sl on a certain degree of slope because that could cause erosion. You're also not allowed to mess with anything within 70 feet or 75 feet of the water's edge. You're not supposed to cut down any of these trees and everything you gotta get a permit for. But primitive shelters, I think maybe a little hand dug hobbit home into the side of the hillside. I've always wanted one. Let's see, we can grab some of this dead stuff. Just stoke the fire up because we haven't made any lunch yet today. Still fairly early. Make Sarah some delicious lunch. It'll be our first bacon wrapped apples. I'm gonna try and do them with some bacon wrap and uh, sausage this time. Something I've never done before. And goat cheese in the middle. Put those over the fire. Let's see what we got. Got some coals in here. There we go. Voila. Fire again. This is so cool. Uh, this is the culmination of so many of my dreams and Sarah's dreams too, that we were able to do this and uh, be able to have a place to, you know, raise our kids and, and teach them more about the outdoors. Be able to have the kayaks here and, and bring them down and just let them loose, you know, make sure that they you know, they all know how to swim now, but I'm gonna keep working with them on all that kinds of stuff about, you know, knowing the ice and how thick it needs to be, knowing your your limitations, the temperature of the water, how long you can stay in the water for the temperature of the water, what it takes to catch and cook their own fish here, what it takes to, to build a shelter and be able to spend the night and uh, how to boil their own water and, and to just keep nourishing them with the knowledge that they need to you know, to go out into the world and do all the things that need to happen out there. Even if they end up becoming a hairdresser, the lessons that they learn from working with their hands and what they can achieve when they put their full effort into it and they go push past the difficult and the, the frustrating is going to be lessons that they can use when they become, oh no, I think Stero said at some point she wanted to be a chef. Uh, Sky says, oh, is it a professional shopper? Um, different things like that, which, you know, if that's what she wants to be, there's there's plenty of opportunities to do that. People hire you to do stuff like that at different times. And I can't remember exactly what it was that Abby said she wanted to be, but everything they learn here will give them the resilience to know that whatever they set their minds to, you know, they can accomplish within reason. You know, people like to say, oh, you can do whatever you want to do. Obviously, you can do a lot, but you can't do it you want to do you can't breathe underwater you can't do ridiculous things you know if you're a one-armed guy you're probably not gonna hang wallpaper you know if you're a, a skinny scrawny person you're not necessarily gonna be the strongest man in the world so there are limitations but that's what getting outdoors and having these ventures are is knowing your strengths knowing your weaknesses and knowing how far you can push each thing and to turn out a successful result at the other end of it. Instead of trying to overachieve and finding yourself broken down because you put too much into it and it wasn't a realistic goal. But to know how to accomplish them a step at a time and achieve success is what's important. That's what I uh, look forward to teaching the kids as we spend our time here. And for you guys, I get to build all kinds of awesome stuff and come out here with just myself 
and friends that are visiting. If Ace comes to her a visit, he'll be able to camp out and stay here. You know, the Wooded Beardsman comes, we can have some adventures. This could be our new base camp. You know, Sarah and I can build a cool shelter. But we'll start with primitive, work our way up to um, maybe a little tiny house from the Amish so we have a base camp to store stuff in and be able to spend the nights in and be comfortable and then build it up to uh, having a big yurt that the whole family could stay in. It's a little bit ridiculous, but they even told me when I bought this, like I have to get permission for a campsite and they can give me a permanent campsite thing where I can make a permanent campsite platform, but the tents and things that go on it can't be permanent. So that's, that's the nature of the beast, I guess, in this situation. But like I said, I'm gonna push the limits. But that's the fun part of it all. We'll figure out what those limits are together. I'll learn about it and I'll share it with you guys and we'll build all kinds of amazing things up in here. Uh, as far as I know, tree houses are doable. Little swinging bridges like the Ewoks had and, and the kids can each have their little tree house forts and things like that. And, and Water World 2.0, we'll build that here and have it off of the dock and be able to launch it and go out and stay on the lake and uh, have our underwater bubble as part of that. I never got to that this year. I was really looking forward to that. Ooh, we're talking so much, we could be fishing. I'm gonna get my uh, lines all set and see if we can't catch a fish while we're uh, cooking. My stepdaughter was out on the ice yesterday. She's dancing all around your tail, the footprints and stuff. I've, I've become really light, but not that light. I think I'll try and just set the jaw jacker thingy. There we go. I think the uh, Strike Pro fishing pole and the bell depth sinker thingy. worms. I could have just poked a hole if I had my hatchet or something, but I don't. Oh, see? Yeah, it just goes right through. Nothing but slush there. <laughs> I bought this off of Amazon the other day. I modified it so it fits to the drill. And, uh, Yeehaw. Let's see how it works. Ugh. That might have been a bad idea. Really got to muckle into it. Oh. Well, that's one way to do it. Might be enough to catch a trout. I'll give her a try. I haven't used this Strike Pro very much because it's, it's kind of has this weird thing about you have to have a string on the end of your, your pole so it hooks into here, but I modified that too. So now my pole hooks into the end of there. <laughs> Look at that. I'm just gonna set it right here on the tree so I don't have to reach down or step down into the ice and fall through. If I get a bite, It'll work just the same. Open the bale, bring it down, get my worm. So we'll put that on the, the pole. A little ring if it goes off. Some trout worms. And I don't really need to depth it since I can see the bottom. Let's see, this will see this will be the trick. I haven't tried it yet outside of really quick in the office. That hooks right there. This goes over that. It's on the bottom now, so I need to wind it up a little. Alright, she's just off the bottom. Fish comes along. You can see it right in there. Halfway down. There we go. About six inches off the bottom. Fish comes along. There we go. Perfect. All right, let's reset that now. I got the just right. Whew. 
pretty shallow out there. But trout, like it shallow, might get lucky. Be my first fish at the new lakefront property. How cool would that be? I'm stoked. Gotta put some wood on the fire. All right, while well, we wait for the fire to warm up, let me introduce our sponsor for today's video. They're in here somewhere. There we go, My Medic. My Medic, Medic Packs. We got three main kits that I asked them for, which are gonna be part and parcel of my adventures going forward. This bigger one, this is gonna be like my 30 day survival challenge one right here, coming with me for any of those. This one is gonna be always in my ice fishing bag. And this one is gonna be always in my car. If I do pull over on the scene of an accident and somebody's been hurt, and I'm the first person there, there is a, quite a few different important pieces of equipment here that could be used to help somebody stabilize and uh, until the medics get there, until somebody that's a true medic. And actually, my medic has been part of my kit for a while now. Um, being on History Channel's Alone Show, you had to have a med kit with you. When I was originally on the show, they didn't have this med kit, but after I came back and I worked with them on some other pilot programs that never made it onto TV, they actually sent me one of these med kits, one of their earlier versions, and then I went and bought the same thing after seeing all the stuff that was in it. It was such a well-made kit. So far, I've only ever had to use the Band-Aids. When I was doing the catch and cook up a tree one, I ended up cutting my hand pretty badly in just one of those weird spots. I think it was like on the back of a finger or something. But these Band-Aids were so high quality. Their business story and business model was based on Somebody, a close family member, had died in an accident and the right equipment wasn't available. And so that's why they came up with these kits and that's why they started making My Medic. And I think that's pretty amazing. My Medic offers comprehensive video training courses on their site, so you'll know what you're doing when it counts. I've learned a lot. Now I have kits everywhere I am, like my home, my wallet, up in the office, and even ones for my pets. Click the link below and use the code Fowler for 20% off their entire store. When it comes to the 30 day survival challenge, last time I was in the Rockies, I ended up cutting into my foot. I ended up using some of these cheap suture things and they kept popping off. The zip pack would have made such a big difference in my 30 day survival challenge in the Rockies. Those little suture sticky on things, they weren't the best. Just for you guys, my viewers, we're gonna do a special thing. Leave it in the comments below, my medic, and we're gonna do a special drawing and we're gonna give away three of these to three different people. Let's get on with the uh, let's get on with the rest of the adventure. <laughs> so set up. This is so nice. Ah. Oh. What do we got? Oh, I forgot I brought that. I got some asparagus. Some cilantro, goat cheese, and Spring Prairie Farms, and the bacon. Oh, this stuff is the best bacon I have ever had in my entire life, I swear. I'm getting smoked, I need to back up. There we go. That's a little better, something like that. First things first, we got our apples. Do 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 the hard part is cutting out the core without going all the way through because you want to leave the uh, room in here. You're going to stuff it full of cheese, leave the bottom on. If it's a block of cheddar, you stuff it in there. So you got to pop all these parts and pieces out so when you go to eat it, you can just eat the whole thing. And the only thing that might end up on your taste buds a little bit is this little butt of the apple. But I pick away at that a little bit real quick. And you can eat them. My dad used to always eat every piece of the apple. I remember as a kid thinking like, you're disgusting. He'd eat right through, spit the seeds out, and eat everything but the stem and the seeds. Doesn't really matter what kind of apple you use. I think personally a Macintosh, but I grew up on eating Macintosh apples in Vermont every year. Those were my favorite. But I think these are Cortland's. Some apples taste better than the others. I don't particularly care for the green ones. I think those are kind of meh. I miss our garden now that it's winter. We had all kinds of delicious things in there every day. 
And when you don't have delicious stuff in your garden, there's always, at least around here, there's farmer's markets and farm stands and the vegetables at farmer's markets and farm stands are so delicious. Nowadays, you go to a farmer's market and they got meat totalers, is that a thing? Meat totalers, meat peddlers. Beautiful. Nice big cavity in there, just stuffed full of cheese. I've never done it with goat cheese before. I tried it with brie, run, brie once and it just, it melted and just ran out the whole thing. Cheddar tends to do that too. I think goat cheese doesn't tend to melt like that. Just stuff it full of that goat cheese. All right, this is where it's gonna get difficult. I got the uh, sausage. And I seen this like TikTok or something that was like dragon eggs, they called it. And they had, I think they took an egg, wrapped it in sausage, maybe rolled it in some crisp or something. I'm hoping that the goat cheese is unlike the cheddar, doesn't melt quite as easily. And we get a nice, nice effect of just really stuffed full of soft, melty cheese. <laughs> it looks like a giant meatball. The ultimate male versus the ultimate meatball. I'm not sure what that stick was, but I like to taste the sticks. Some of them are minty, and some of them taste really gross if it's a little shrub stick. I don't know what those are that taste really gross, but you don't really want to cook your food on one of those, right? That'd be gnarly. Once I get my split started, you bend the side that's thicker. So I'm not, and the reason I'm splitting it is if I jab the apples onto your, with a split stick, then I can tie the other end back around it. I'm thinking that will give me the ability to turn my steak with my apples on it over the fire and rotate it without them just spinning. That's usually what happens to me and I gotta like tie the apple on. And while that's cooking, I'll maybe I'll go up over the hill and take the chainsaw and work on my pathway down here. I had to go over quite a few trees with the sled and stuff. And I make a nice pathway when the kids are here after the snow comes tomorrow. Woo! Sled and party. Sled and party and bonfire at the land. So many cool things I can do here. I can't wait till the, the ice freezes though so I can get out there and find the sweet spots, explore this whole place. There's, ah. Oh, it's gonna be so much fun. And uh, I had the idea taking one of these hill spots, preferably over there, and putting in a little tow rope someday, and maybe make it a little go down through the woods, make two jumps or something like that. You hit a jump or two jumps, depending on what you wanna do, and the kids can uh, practice their skiing and get in big airs, stuff like that. How fun was that? I used to snowboard and get big air when I was younger, before I was afraid and uh, I landed on my head at the snowball, snowboarding, and uh, it hurt so much, it like kind of threw me off. I didn't really dare to ride hard again after that. Well, that didn't work so well. All right, now cooking string. It looks pretty good. <laughs> uh, we got our bacon balls on a stick. <laughs> let's uh, let's put them over the fire. Oh, that's perfect. There we go, we'll let that cook for a little bit. And, oh, we almost forgot the secret ingredient, the hot sauce and the uh, wadobo. We need to put a little bit of that on there. Make it oh, just pop. Hit them with a bit of wadobo and the Fowler hot sauce. And we'll just drizzle this on a little bit every time we rotate it. Oh, 
Yep. Ooh. All kinds of stuff to do here. I think I'm gonna set the fish trap out with a little bit of dog food, see if I can't catch some minnows. I could always just go up to the old land and put it up in the pond up there and I'll catch some minnows in a heartbeat, but we're gonna be selling that. So no more shelter in the woods. That could be yours. You could own it. You could be out there having your own adventures. So uh, if you're interested, go to the contact page on my uh, website, send us an email, and we'll send you the uh, information packet on that. You could own a beautiful two and a half acres in the Appleton woods with lots of adventures still to ready to be had there. Dear Diary, I read recently that the phrase bringing home the bacon originated back in the 12th century when the Church of England offered a side of bacon to any man who could swear before the church that he had not fought or quarreled with his wife for over a year and a day. Any man who could bring home the bacon was highly respected in his community. Not to denigrate the sanctity of marriage, but I find something a little bit wrong with that statement. That anybody would bring home the bacon and other people would find them highly respected in their community seems a little bit off to me. I think it more likely that there was a lot of honest men and a lot of fat priests because they had a surplus of bacon. Then again, maybe this also drove the invention of the term big fat liar. Shovel. Just use the shovel instead of the drill for the hole this time. Bank line, basket, and some dog food. I don't know how I'm gonna set this bait trap. I'm fishing right there. It's like a foot and a half of water. I was thinking I'd chop a hole right here and tie it off. Now, how do I get down there to cut a hole in the ice without going through? Not, I might be able to stand on it. Oh, that's making sound. That's sketchy. <gasps> uh, all right, standing on it, standing on it. Seems solid enough. I don't know if I dare to go any further out. Let's see how thick the ice. Oh, that's nothing. There's, wait, is there another piece? All right, this is what we're looking at for actual ice. That's uh, inch and a half plus this inch and a half of stuff on top. Not, I mean, all together, that's, 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 that is kind of almost three, that's three inches. So, Seth. Can I touch the bottom? There we go. It's only as deep as the shovel is. Our dog food in there. There we go, and I guess I need to make it bigger. <laughs> go well trap is baited maybe it'll track something else even if I don't catch any minnows maybe I'll get some crawfish we'll find out if there's some crawfish in here I don't know if they hang out in the shallow during the winter time you know most things move to warmer water when the temperatures flip so our warm water fish uh, sunfish, perch, things like that. They'll be in deep holes, 15, 30 feet, in little basins, depending on how deep your average spots are in the lake. Nature Moments with Sarah. So one of my favorite things to do when I'm in the woods is walk around and find little plants that I know are edible and also find out why um, they are used. So Zach will find me a lot of times sitting on the ground when he's fishing and I'll be like gathering something and looking up what it's used for. And this is 
the, what was it called, the tea berry um, plant, and it was used for flatulence. <laughs> Just kind of funny. I thought Zach needed that. There's blueberry hills over that way and mountains. So, I don't know for sure, but I'm wondering if this might be fossilized sticks in these rocks. They're all over the shore. Let me know if you think it is. Water's washed away some of the soil and there's these things that Zach and I collect. Sometimes they're called ground nuts and they can get up to the size of an avocado and as small as a pine nut. There's a little bone with some teeth. This has been Nature Moments with Sarah. What you got? Ground nuts. Ground nuts. Oh, yeah. Nice. See? Gonna roast those up for our dinner? Yeah. We got the, uh, mm. our bacon meat wads, bacon apple meat wads on the cook, and uh, you brought home the vegetables. <laughs> but well, that's a nice little handful. Yeah. All right. I'll wash them up and wrap them in bacon, and we'll... <laughs> <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe we don't need more bacon on this trip. Uh, there, what do you want to do now? Should we work on our trail a little bit? Yeah. Yeah? See if we can work on our little trail down to the water and if it snows. I was thinking if we fix the trail now, then the kids will be able to slide it like a sliding hill. Right down to the water? Yeah, right down to, well, maybe not into the water just yet because the ice is still sketch, but, or as the kids like to say, sus. <laughs> So, it's been a week since I got these stitches and they have to come out. They wanted me to come back in for a visit just to do it. I thought, hey, what the heck? We got this with us. Why don't we just pull the stitches ourselves? I don't know if I can do it myself. Hun, can you do it? Uh, you can try. You try? You gonna try it? See if we can, the little scissors. Mini tool mod, they says on there. I got that. Hmm, little whistle. I didn't want to blow it too hard. Wow, that works pretty good. That works pretty good. Pen light. Oh, that's nifty. Our tweezers. Ooh, those seem like they're good. That'll do it. And then, so what we're gonna do is, I think if you snip below and then you pull on the little knot from each of the stitches, you could pull the stitches right out with the tweezers. You ready? Oh, I see the little knots. Yep. There's so much blood! You got it all. Think you got it all? Mm-hmm. All right. Looks pretty good. Looks good. Got our stitches out. Now we can uh, go do some, uh, what, work on our trail? Yeah. All right. My medic for the win again. Finally got to use something besides just the band-aids and a little bit of ibuprofen out of the kit. <laughs> let's, go, uh, let's go work on our trail. Make All a right. little sledding trail and a trail to get down here easier. All right, so we got these guys in the way and these guys are gonna make a trail. The most direct path from the car is up there. And and then it goes straight over to where our little fire is. You can see the smoke for the apples cooking. And uh, our property still goes for quite a little ways that way. And the majority of it's all down that way. And, uh, oh, what do I see here? Oh, this is, this is amazing. Look at this. Oh, wow. I have only ever seen this once before out in the wild. This is so rare. Would you look at that? Oh my goodness. The tree. This is an oak. They don't, they don't do this very often. The oak. This is a, a pregnant oak. You almost never see a pregnant tree in the woods. Last time I saw this, I tried to wait till it gave birth with a new tree, but it takes so long and uh, I, I missed it. I, I went away and I came back and 
and then like two years later it had given birth and you really almost never see this in the wild this is so amazing look at that it's i mean it's big enough i i almost feel like this could be twins hi and i found a pregnant tree where do you think we should make our pathway go right to i mean right where you are right there yeah. so we have to stay we can't cut anything within 70 feet of the water 70 feet of the water is just beyond that bigger tree down there and we're not supposed to cut for erosion purposes i think i mentioned that earlier and this dead stuff but we're also allowed to make a winding path down to the water it's starting to be like the time of day where everybody gets out of work, isn't it? Yeah. You can I, hear all the... I could barely hear you. The trucks are all... <laughs> Some pluses. Lots of pluses and a couple noisy minuses, but I'm happy so far. Aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. I just can't wait to have some place to get warm. Huh? You want to? <laughs> I'm already freezing. We got to build a shelter, huh? Yeah. Or get a tiny house or there's something up here that we can get into sooner than later. With the most coming, I think I'm going to build it before he gets here, because it's going to be, it's, I've just been looking at the weather, two weeks from now when he gets here, it's going to be below freezing all the time. So we're going to need a shelter to retreat to, and not just uh, be like sitting around a fire warming our hands all the time. Now, when I first bought my land up in Appleton, I, uh, I cut a lot of stuff down. And I was like, I'm going to cut half of the property so I can have fields and, and gardens and vegetables and all this stuff. And I cut an acre of it all open. And it became so hot up there and the sun was beating down on me. I had to retreat into the part that did still had trees. I regretted so badly. I cut down some big oaks and things that were big clusters of oak to clear that area. Because I was going to plant sunflowers and make my own pressed oil and had all these big dreams and I didn't know at that point about Sylvia pasture and growing you know underneath in some of the shade and having a better forest to protect the ground and uh, from too much sun beating down on it so now I know a lot more about it and I'm gonna try to do that here is cultivate the undergrowth where we're allowed to and clear only around the uh, clear around the good trees making space for smaller trees to grow up and continue to keep a good solid canopy over us and then selectively harvesting some of this for materials to build with and wearing my safety gear growing up my parents had a deer camp and it was only maybe five or seven acres and uh, they took care of it, made it look beautiful underneath the trees, cultivated the, the better trees for over 20 years. Five acres or so of woods they were taken care of and managing to harvest enough firewood to heat their home every year from just going up there and working away at it. So properly managed, we can get firewood for the union house and firewood to mess around with here and building materials could be pretty awesome. Why don't you cut down something big like that? Big like, oh, like that dead one there? Yeah. That, uh, that seems more exciting. That seems <laughs> more exciting. <Yeah. laughs> All right, why not? We're allowed to cut anything dead we want. Good? I think so.
apples done. They're looking pretty good. I should have brought the, uh, I'm getting fancy here. I should have brought the meat thermometer that you bought me for oh, Christmas. Yeah. I could have left it in here and then it would have sent me a message on my phone. I think we got to cook it for another 30, 40 minutes. Like it's closer because the fire had gone down. The fire is a little bit further off than I like. So maybe give him another turn. Do love winter, but I get so tired of this getting dark stuff. You know, it's only 4, 15 or something, and it's so dark. I mean, like, what do you think, hon? It's already pretty dark, but it was worse. It was worse? Yeah. When? Like, In before, the middle of winter? Yeah. Maybe I should check the uh, fish trap, see if any minnows have come over. It's only been, like, two and a half hours, but maybe something's in there. Maybe a crawdad? I, mean, I just got like super excited. That, you know, she's like, I want to go out onto the ice. I want to go out there. Can't we put some boards down? And and I I hear you on. I want to be out there too. But uh, I thought we should take your boat and just barrel right through the ice. I, the boat wouldn't have barreled through the ice. <laughs> we would have ruined it or something. It was just enough that that wouldn't work. Yeah. But if we had a hovercraft. If I had the hovercraft working, we could have cruised across and uh, and stopped on open water and ice fish. I might have to buy a hovercraft or build a better hovercraft, that uh, hovercraft 1.0. I, I did buy a fan for it to do a 2.0 hovercraft because it worked and it cruised around. We'll have to bring it down here and put the fan on it. Uh, just like Peter Shreepole did with the sled, I bought that same fan unit and controller and everything. So. Because the thing was the leaf blower uh, inflation part and hovering worked just fine. But the leaf blowers propulsion wise did not have enough power to move us around. So if I put a fan on it like Peter Shreepoles, maybe a little chair, little uh, con control wires or whatever so I could boo all around this, we'll have to do that this winter. I love this tree. <laughs> this is so cool. Like during the summertime we'll be able to like the kids are probably going to be swimming all around here and hanging on the tree and... Nope, nothing yet. Mm -hmm. Still a slim possibility we'll catch something, but nothing, nothing doing yet. These ones were a little small to eat, so we're going to plant them down here and see if we can grow some. brought some of our sprouts with us. Oh, we love growing sprouts. Sprouts and the ground nuts right there on our, and blue cheese on a salad. Ooh, all right. And did you want to toss it with the blue cheese or just drizzle it? Just gonna drizzle it. Drizzle it, all right. Did, it does not, a lot of blue cheese. It's cold. So oh, it's cold, is that what it is? It's, it. it's cold so it's not coming out. <laughs> there we go, nice. Last but not least, we'll go and put our asparagus on to cook. We need a couple of these little sticks that we brought with us. We're cheating. I brought sticks with us, hon. <laughs> I was imagining that this was gonna work and I think I got it. Uh, we got some saggage. We got some. Oh, we got some droopy asparagus. We gotta rescue it here. <laughs> All right, I was afraid that that was gonna happen with the bamboo sticks. Uh, hmm. So many creative ideas of things I want to try. You know, we can be down here by the water and build a little table, kind of like this, the bench, and be able to cook our stuff on it.
asparagus cook in action. All right. Those look good. Oh, got cheese dripping, sizzling going on. I think those are done. Let's see, oh, breaks right off. So, oh yeah. Oh yeah. What do you think? Yeah, it looks really good. All right, we got our seltzers, we got our, oh, that seltzer's cold. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna restoke the fire so we get nice and warm while we're Really jammed that thing in the ground, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Let's see. One. Ah, ah, ah. Mm -hmm. Two. Oh, I tied that one on. So we don't particularly want to eat the string. Although, I'm sure at this point the string probably tastes I know. pretty good. Oh, let's say Grace, because I'm just about to start nibbling on little pieces. Oh, you don't want to hold my hands? <laughs> hold my hands. They're, they're, oh, they're all gross. So nice. We're going to get into the food anyways. Moisturize me. <laughs> Moisturize you with bacon. <laughs> Getting her ready for the fire. <laughs> Dear Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this beautiful land you've blessed us with and, uh, and the delicious food. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, yeah, and uh, a fish would have been nice, but maybe yeah. next time. Thanks. Can you smell the goat cheese? Can you smell that? Oh, smells good. I don't I, really smell the goat cheese. You don't smell the goat I cheese? Smell, like, the apple the I bacon. smell, I smell all of it. Like the goat cheese and the, and the, oh. Mmm. Mm hmm Mmm. Going for the slice. Ooh. Oh, that looks amazing. Mmm. Oh wow, all crisped up and the cheese is all, oh, it's just like dipping. Mm. So our sausage shells, everything looks deliciously cooked. Perfect, and it actually, I see a bit of a smoke rind on it, or I don't know, maybe that's the difference between the, the sausage and the bacon. So I'll slice it into some like apple sliced pieces and we'll have that crunchy appliness all over our salads then. What'd you put on there? Cranberries. Oh, cranberries from our, the cranberries from our earlier mm -hmm. adventures? Yeah, they lasted. Oh, wow. That was like so long ago. They're hard to get out of there. I want to eat them while they're warm. Okay. That's really good. Right? That's a really good way to cook them. Isn't that delicious? Mm. I don't think we'll have to plant out here some asparagus. Oh yeah, and fiddleheads. Mmm. Can you plant fiddleheads? Oh yeah. Really? Oh, the cranberry. Was that good? I haven't gotten one yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's so delicious. Mmm. Mm. I think we should open up a restaurant and just stop making videos. We'd be billionaires. You should just go around and make people's menus for them. Mm. Come up with new ideas. That's a good idea. Mm. Yeah, if I, I didn't have to run a restaurant so I could still make videos and do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And just get just have the fun of it yeah just have the fun of making up menus for restaurants you could create like a seasonal seasonal menu mm. hey cheers mm. i think we nailed it for our first cook at the new land on the lake and just i am so glad i'm so stoked that we uh <laughs> so, Glad. <laughs> glad. I'm having trouble talking. <laughs> I'm, um, yeah, I'm having a, we finally got my dream land and I'm having a stroke. <laughs> That's probably not very funny for somebody. It's already no, had a stroke. Sorry, part. sorry about that. It, um, yeah, I'm glad we did this. Like, 
uh, not just this, but like we we went for it and bought this. This is gonna be so much fun for the kids, so much fun for us, and uh, I hope it'll be so much fun for you guys. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, I think that pretty much does it for us. We're gonna enjoy the fire by ourselves a little bit, have a little bit more of a date night. The kids are gone. We don't have mm -hmm. to run home right away. We can stoke the fire up, sit here, and talk about our hopes and dreams and all the fun things we're gonna do here and fun things we're gonna share with you guys. So, we'll see you guys in the next one. Fowlers, out. Special thanks to MyMedic for sponsoring this video. Check out that link in the description below for MyMedic and don't forget to use the code Fowler for 20% off their entire store. And you could win one of these three kits by commenting MyMedic and the kit that you're interested in.